I recently bought about $200 of Control Freaks. Actually, $214.60 out the door. Because I was going to make this video on my own time and my own dime. Then about a week later, I was accepted into the Control Freaks creator program where they sent me a welcome aboard sailor package, a little bundle of some gamer goodies that I had the option of bringing to the attention of my audience, which, of course, they're getting bundled in with this video. If you're a gamer, particularly a controller player, you've probably heard of Control Freaks. They're one of the longest running and by far the most popular and best-selling option for when it comes to thumbstick cap add-ons. And they also make some other really interesting products such as RGB LED lights for the back of the TV and the precision rings, which give you increased resistance on your thumbsticks. Despite the fact that we have a smorgasbord of products over shoulder, if you're going to dig into the back library, like I said, they've been at this for about three console generations. There are so many discontinued thumbstick caps and these come out frequently, not only annually, but there's sometimes seasonal drops depending on what game it's for. So throughout the year, there's always some kind of Control Freaks exclusive drop going on with some kind of limited edition, not going to be sold very often, design. I did pick up a couple of niche discontinued thumbstick caps that are my personal favorites that I wanted to look at, but this video is primarily going to focus on the most popular models that are always going to be in the lineup because they're simply that popular for a reason. They work incredibly well. This is your controller captain. We've reached 6,900 feet. Go ahead and start flicking the sticks and molly whopping the back paddles. Mm, you don't like back paddles? How about those rear buttons? We've tested almost 100 custom and premium controllers and we're only at the beginning. You need a thumbstick guide or a tutorial on how to overclock your controller? Check out the controller playlist. Bing bong. Controller captain out. Now, if you want to get in the weeds with the science or the marketing, if you want to call it that as well, but either way, it's selling control freak caps and it's also making sense as to why these are actually a good buy for us, the gamers. They do have some very colorful pictures or diagrams here breaking down exactly what these thumbstick caps do, but you don't need this because you got me and I'm going to break it down in layman's terms for you. With Control Freaks or any kind of thumbstick caps or add-ons, it's going to give you additional height, giving you more leverage. Generally, leverage means you're getting more strength on something, but that's not the case here. This leverage is going to give you more height, so you can bump up the in-game sensitivity just a couple of skoshes. You don't need to go crazy here. It's actually more detrimental to play on a very high sensitivity like a 2020 in Call of Duty, just like a 7-7 is fine, and then you add a Control Freak cap to the right stick. You can do the left if you're playing a racing game and you want to be able to steer a little bit more precise, but for the shooting games, the right stick is what you want to pop one on because it's going to give you that additional height. To where now when you move the top of the thumbstick cap, you actually have measurably longer area to travel before the stem or shaft of the cap bumps up against the outside of your thumbstick gate and you're at full lock. I hope to God I explained that as precise and crisp as I could because I really, I tried. Now, a lot of these Control Control Freak kits come in a twofer where you have a mid or low rise for the left stick and then a mid or high rise for the right stick. You put the higher one on the right and the lower one on the left. So you get a little bit more height and grip for the left and then even more height and the same grip for the right stick. I like those ones quite a bit because me having medium to larger size hands, you know, your North American demographic of gamers over here. But by adding more height on both of the analog or thumbsticks, it actually puts your hands in a more ergonomic, comfortable position to hold your controller, especially when you combine that with some kind of a silicone grip on your controller to add more grip or width to that as well. Then if you're using an increased height thumbstick cap and only then you do not want to do this with a stock height stick because it'll be actually too much resistance for you. Then you can add the Control Freaks precision rings, which are these dyed foam circles that come in three strengths and you slip those around the stem or shaft of your analog stick and it gives you indeed more resistance because you're pushing up against that foam. It's compressing as you're moving the thumbstick. Now you can double those down. In fact, if you have a very tall analog stick, you will need to double or even triple down on these rings. For example, my evil DualSense controller has a right analog stick that touches the skies. It scrapes my ceiling. The damn thing is so tall. It's like the shifter on an 18 wheeler. And in order for me to even feel increased resistance of any kind, because the thumbstick cap doesn't actually make contact with the rings, I need to triple up on them. Now that we've covered what control freaks are and why they're supremely moist, I'm going to bring you over shoulder on the desk so we can look at each individual model that we have here today. And I can talk about the pros and cons of each and which ones are are my favorite at the end of the day. Without any reasonable doubt, the most popular Control Freak models are going to be the Infernos and the Vortexes. Actually, the Galaxies, not the Vortexes, although we're going to talk about how similar those two models are in a little bit. You hear these talked about the most, you see them on controllers, and they've been sold for a long time, and they're not getting discontinued anytime soon because they're phenomenal. And I'm going to say right now, I'm not a fan of the very aggressive graphics. For example, this Diablo one, and definitely down here with the Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, as they are downright uncomfortable because they 
have these little points that stick out and you definitely feel those. Not to mention, I don't actually think these look very cool either. It's funny, I just said all that before I even noticed the price. It is slashed on sale, probably because these aren't selling very well. They can't all be bangers, you know? They put out a lot of just dank caps. They can't all be winners. KF's got to take the L occasionally and this is a, just a, a juicy L. If you own these and like these, please drop in the comment section, not so we can haze and bully you into submission, but just so we can know that some gamers out there bought these and do enjoy these caps because they, they look silly. Now, the funny thing is those two most popular models, the Infernos and the Galaxies are actually very similar. If you look at them side by side, these red ones are the Infernos and these white ones are the Galaxies. Keep in mind, you can get both of these in different colors. I don't know if the Infernos come in any colors other than red, but definitely the Galaxies come in at least three colors. It's almost a draw, a split decision for me because they are so similar on the fingertips that they almost feel identical. Yes, you can see a visible difference, but they feel almost identical on my thumbs. Rubbing my thumbs back and forth, I do actually prefer the Infernos over the Galaxies, which I know is insane because I do believe the Galaxies are actually number one position for like best-selling control freak caps, Infernos slightly behind them. But I think because the Infernos are a little bit more flat and don't have those raised bumps or ridges, it just feels a little bit better and I still get plenty of grip. But you can see the Infernos are a concave stick with a very low rise swirl around them, which does provide a good amount of grip. And the Galaxies have a very similar design, like I mentioned, except instead of a swirl, I'm, I'm gonna count these, goddammit, nine more aggressively raised points and then a little flower pattern in the middle. And they do feel phenomenally good. However, I will say when I'm resting my thumb completely flat, they don't feel as good as the Infernos. Another model that's gaining popularity very quickly is gonna be the Rushes. These are unlike any other model I've seen because they actually come up to like a half pipe in the front and hug your thumb into place, which is sick. I don't know why the hell they say it's perfect for Elden Ring right here. Just ignore all these recommendations. This is just marketing, you know, honestly, it really is. Because once you find the control freak design that's right for your gameplay, for your thumbs, your preference, they will work for any and every single game that you're going to be playing. And just to save you some time, maybe you watch a lot of TikToks, you're not a big YouTuber, you only got about 60 seconds to get this content digested. If you only give a shit about performance and being accurate in gameplay and you don't care about what your thumbsticks look like and you just want something that's going to work good for you and you liked concave sticks, the ones that dip in like this, you're going to want the Infernos. Doesn't matter the color, get the ones that are on sale, the cheapest, if you don't care about the color. Don't try spray painting control freaks because it actually loses the grip of the rubber because you have that layer of paint over it and you're going to smell that spray paint forever because it soaks into the rubber silicone and speaking from experience here, don't try and paint control freaks. Just shop for a different color because they have a big catalog of models. But the Vortexes is my number one recommendation. Look how grippy that is right now. The Vortexes are my number one recommendation for concave sticks and my number one recommendation for dome sticks, which I do prefer over concave sticks as long as they have enough grip. If they don't, then domed is a stupid shape because it's just your thumb's just going to slip over the top of it. These little droppings from the gods are the CQCX or Close Quarter Combat Extreme. I just made that up, but I'm assuming that's what the acronym stands for. As you can see, there's only one of the two in there right now. The other one's pre-installed on the AIM DualSense V3 I recently reviewed with the new trigger system. If you haven't seen that review, it is a humdinger and is linked in the description below. But these right here are the best dome sticks I have ever felt. Better than the DualSense Edge's pre-installed dome sticks, which are my favorite stock dome sticks that you're going to get right out of the box as they are freakishly grippy. My only complaint there is that the high rise, quote unquote, is more of a mid rise. It's it's not very high at all. In fact, it could be double the height for your shooter players. The CQCX over here is actually about double the grip of the Edge's thumbsticks, which are already like Ferrari tires. The DualSense Edge is Ferrari tires and the CQC is Formula One track slicks. These are super grippy and I think the reason for that is, is it has these little dimples that actually dip in and it makes it to where no matter where you are on the thumbstick, you're going to be able to move the thumbstick very easily. These are awesome. Probably my favorite Control Freak model. It's tied between the CQCs and the Infernos because it depends if I'm going domed or concave that day, but generally domed with the CQCXs. These are fucking sick. Another very popular concaved auction. I didn't get them at auction, but a good option here is the Omnis, which are awesome. I always say they look like little grilled hamburger patties. They have these grill marks on them. Actually, that looks more like higher tread pattern. These are dumbass grippy, as all the other KFs are, but because of those individual lines, I feel like these don't need to be wiped 
off or degreased very often. Even if you're somebody that snacks a lot and then goes back to gaming, you're not going to have to wipe these off very often because any oils from your hand or whatever kind of get caught in those troughs. And these just stay grippy. I love the Omnis. One thing that needs mentioned with these control freaks is going to be the packaging. The fact that you have a place to actually test them first. You have this cutout where you can rub your fingertips across there and be like, Ooh, wow, that really is some grippy rubber or silicone compound. Maybe these little plastic and rubber niblets are worth 15 to $25. It really does depend on how you look at it. The fact is these are going to last you probably a lifetime, maybe not a lifetime. They could get worn down over time, but probably several years. They're interchangeable, so you can swap them from controller to controller. And despite the marketing silliness on there, like increases your KD ratio 26%, that actually is probably a factual statement, but it's not just the caps that's doing it, giving you extra height and grip, and you're the one that's making use of that by becoming a better gamer. So really, it's it's team effort between you and Control Freaks. It's not like Control Freaks takes all the, the gusto, all the glory for you becoming an absolute esports sweat lord, slapping them sideways and sending them back to the lobby with no god points. But these do help. Also, keep in mind platform compatibility. KF makes it easy because it is color coded on the top, depending on platform, royal blue for PlayStation, red for Nintendo and lime green for Xbox. And then you also have in the top corner what platform it's specifically for. Keep in mind, PS4 and 5 sticks are the same and Xbox One and Series sticks are the same because if you look at the controllers, they were carried over from generation to generation. PlayStation with the hybrids and Xbox with their never grippy enough concaves. Now, if you want additional grip, but you don't really care about height, yes, you will get a little bit of extra height, maybe a couple millimeters just because you're putting on a rubber condom basically to sleeve to slip over the top of your caps. If you have a third party controller that doesn't have compatibility with standard control freak caps that have the little plastic dish that snaps on, these are straight up universal caps that will slip over damn near any thumbstick cap. So these are a good recommendation for two reasons. If you have a controller that doesn't work with any other KFs and two, if you don't want height, but you want the grip. Also, they come in a slew of colors. So if you're just trying to color match your custom controller, this might be a good option for you as well. These are also platform specific, awkwardly enough. It says Xbox and PlayStation, but um, they're universal. The difference is the Xbox ones are a little bit smaller in diameter as the Xbox thumbsticks are smaller in diameter than PlayStation. I'm sick of sitting at my desk, so I'm going to camera change. So I got a couple of stock controllers here it's kind of burning the skin and whatnot i'll try not to spend too much time with these bad boys but we're gonna make these thumbsticks suck less cqc rush close quarter combat i'm gonna be rushing them the only way i play first person shooters pushing push first think later don't worry about call outs comms making sure your gun is actually loaded anything like that just charge i'd also like to see a little b hop in there as well as a slide cancel if you're feeling stinky, you want to bring it back to the MW2 days, a little 360 no scope to throw up on YouTube in 480p. All right, CQC rushes. Now these are for PlayStation 4 and 5, so I'm going to put them on an Xbox controller. They do work, but they're a little bit loose and wiggly because like I mentioned, Xbox's thumbstick caps are smaller in diameter. So indeed, the control freaks are smaller in diameter. Are these legal? Somebody call ATF and see if these CQC rushes are actually able to be shipped to North America. These are unbelievable. So since the CQC rushes are actually shaped, meaning that the back is open, but the sides and top actually have a half dome that covers them. Kind of think of it like a half pipe or lip that hugs your finger in there. I do recommend caulking them in at a bit of a 45 degree angle, since that's the way your thumbs are naturally going to rest on the thumbsticks. But mother of God, the silicone or rubber is actually sticky, not just grippy, but sticky. It stick to my hand. Not for very long, a couple of seconds. You know, I just washed my hands recently, but these are hell of grippy. And since these actually hug your finger in there with a little dish or lip, if you learn to use these these correctly past the learning curve of these and you can manipulate that little dish or dome. I could see some freakishly accurate gameplay coming out of these CQC rushes over here. I'll be playing with you. That's for sure. Now the vortexes and infernos are so similar that it's almost ridiculous that Control Freaks considers these two different models. The only difference is that on the infernos, they're both concaved and on the vortex, one is concaved and one is domed. Other than that, they have the same pattern or design on them. But if you do want one concave stick and one dome stick, Stick, which does feel interesting to have two different thumbstick shapes. I've done it in the past with certain controllers and it wasn't a bad experience by any means. And in fact, once you get used to it, it is kind of nice to have one feeling thumbstick for walking and another feeling thumbstick for aiming. It kind of does make your brain make that separation, that differentiation, made up a word or it's real, between, hmm, the concave stick is me walking around taking the shoelace express and that dome stick is me doming people with that M4 carbine. The vortexes, 
I do like, but personally, I do still prefer the Infernos. If I'm going to go concaved, I'm going double concaved. If I'm going to go domed, both of them should be domed. So for me, the Vortexes are out, but um, if you want one concave, one domed, Vortexes are the Inferno pattern, but with this going on. The Battle Royales over here, I have a two-part problem with. One, they're just riding the coattails of the popularity of the Battle Royale genre here. But the main issue here, not even an issue, but just uh, why I personally don't opt for the Battle Royales over here is the fact that they are also a dome stick design, but Control Freaks already makes the CQCX, which I talked about at the desk earlier, which in my opinion is a better dome design. So if I'm going to pick up a domed Control Freak, it's going to be the CQCX. As where my problem with the Battle Royales is that there's simply too much going on. As you you can see the pattern or design is a little bit too complex and that's my complaint with some of the limited edition control freaks like that cold war one with the star is the fact that they're kind of uncomfortable just for the sake of looking cool but honestly sometimes they're so busy that it doesn't even look cool because there's just too much going on and it looks cluttered unless you're like 14 it looks stupid kind of silly to me and they also feel silly as well because there's too much going on you got these bumps these ridges these lines these dips these troughs it's too much feeling on my fingertips. I'd like to just feel like one surface area, one or two surface areas, not four or five. So these are confusing me right now. Now this is the FPS Freak Edge, as in you're gonna get an edge on the competition. I'm assuming that's where the little naming convention went with that. These are another example of one concaved and one dome, similar to the Vortex, except unlike the Vortex, which is clear as day, one is domed and one is concaved, these almost look like they're both domed, except that one of them, the higher rise, which I'm assuming you're gonna put on that right stick. These are really only concaved a little tiny bit in the center to the point to where they feel like dome sticks. The only concaved part is that little tiny bit in the middle, which does virtually nothing other than look cool cosmetically. So they're basically just two dome sticks. These also look pretty cool. I do like the edges. Let me pop them on, just slather them up real quick. Now I've said this before and I'll say it again. If you have the option of removing your thumbsticks, perhaps you have a pro controller that has those removable or swappable thumbstick caps. I do recommend removing those caps and then putting on the control freaks because you're not gonna put undue pressure on the thumbstick modules by pushing and pulling and constantly installing and removing these thumbstick caps, which you really shouldn't do in the first place because you should just find the ones you like and leave them on until they get worn out. But if you have swappable thumbstick caps, remove them, install the cap, put the stick back on. Oh, I don't like these, to be honest, to be 110% honest. They feel uncomfortable is actually the word. Uh, you, you rarely can use the word uncomfortable for control freaks because usually one of the things that they do is give you way more comfort on your thumb. That's not the case with the edge here, especially with the all domed version. It's actually kind of like not sharp, but it just doesn't feel good on the thumbstick. And then I did say I bought two discontinued limited edition. Well, I guess almost all of them, except the Infernos and the CQCs. And there's like five that are not limited edition that are always going to be there for you. But then all their other drops are limited edition because they only sell them for a short amount of time. And cosmetically, I love these bad boys. These are the zombie edition revive cap soda caps look really cool the only thing i don't like about them is the fact they're pretty much flat they're not domed or concaved which is just a bad shape period for thumbstick caps but because the rubber silicone compound that control freak is using is so goddamn grippy it does counteract the fact that it's flat these look sick i had to pick them up needless to say just by looking at the modern warfare design you're giving up a lot of comfort as well as functionality of circular thumbsticks by having this hexagonal pattern unless you're specifically looking for this shape where you want flat edges that you can maneuver around. Maybe that's an actual thumbstick shape that you're looking for. It's what you prefer, which I think is incredibly niche. I think for most gamers, this is a pretty uncomfortable set of thumbsticks, but they do look good. Maybe you'll cosmetically slap them on a controller that's already broken that you're just going to put on display or something like that. Obviously a custom controller, probably not putting a broken stock controller on display. Like, yep, she shit out on me after two weeks. Stick drift up the rear. Control Freaks has a very tight ass warranty policy as you're only getting a 30 day limited warranty. However, since these are rubberized cat caps that pop on your thumbsticks. Probably not a whole hell of a lot that's going to go wrong over them just wearing out over time. The only caveat to this would be their LED RGB light strips for the back of the TV, which I mentioned during that review. They need to have a specific warranty policy in place for their electronically powered goodies, such as their lights. 30 day limited warranty is not going to cover it. Sidebar, it's very difficult to get to the warranty policy page on the Control Freaks website. I actually had to control F and, you know, offered warranties down here and then, you know, 
you know, unlike a pro controller or any kind of gaming peripheral keyboard mouse, I guess a warranty policy isn't as important because we're talking about rubberized thumbstick caps over here, but I'd like to see that warranty doubled from 30 to 60 days if possible. If not, I'll just go F myself. Now that I have a mountain of control free caps to clean up and the video is just about complete, I'm sweaty, I'm tired, but I'm also kind of relaxed from satisfaction. Drop in the comment section below how stimulated you were by this video. Just a simple thumbs up is very appreciated. Subscribing to the channel greatly supports me and the channel itself, which I, I guess is all one and the same, but I am incredibly excited for the next video like this where I gather a bunch of goodies together, put them on a platter for all of us to snack on, and then we can kind of digest and decide if they're right for us or not. The next major comparison or multi-product video like this is probably going to be the what is the best PS5 DualSense video, which is going to be probably about 45 minutes long with timestamps or chapters in which on this desk I lay out pretty much every pro controller available for the PlayStation 5 platform as of current as I, I, I do have them in my possession and there are thoughts a brewing in the cauldron of the noggin and I will be sharing that. Drop in the comment section below your opinion of Control Freaks or any thumbstick cap company. Uh, there's another one out there. It's very popular. Skull and Bone or Bone Your Skull or something like that that's gaining insane popularity. So I'm sure that will be mentioned down there in the comment section and I'm excited for that as well. Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach in a system as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below. To get in touch with myself and the stallions and stallionettes of Gamer Heaven, join the community Discord and check me out at twitch.tv where I go live every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number and my pH balance is on point. Just kidding. Starting June, I'm going to be live streaming a lot. Thanks for watching. This has been AK40 Kevin hosting Gamer Heaven and I'll see you tomorrow because I upload daily all the time, 60% of the time, sometimes, most of the time. Peace.